Hi, we have to continue with environmental biotechnology and environmental microbiology. And here we are talking about the biotechnology and the environment that how we can use biotechnology in environment. We have to talk in detail and in our previous classes we have talked about the various techniques which can be used for the improvement of environment, for the cleaning of environment, as well as for the betterment of the environment. So we, here we have to talk that how bioremediation is used depends on. We know that bioremediation is the process in which we are using any type of the microorganism or plant, protozoa or fungus for the cleaning of the environment. So in bioremediation, what is contaminant? First of, first of all, uh, regarding that bioremediation before initiating or applying any bioremediation technique that we are selecting what is the contaminated. What is its location? Where it has been uh, happened? What is the soil structure? What is the environment? What is the moisture content? What is the substance over there? either that is soil, that is air, that is water, or that is sand. So on type of chemicals that need to be cleaned up, that which type of chemical or which type of approach will be suitable to remove that pollutant from that environment. Thirdly, we are looking at the concentration of the contaminant, the amount and the duration, that what is the concentration. If there is higher concentration of the contaminant, we are uh, selecting the strategy accordingly. If concentration is low, we are uh, selecting a strategy accordingly. And how much time can be required for the depletion or for degradation of that uh, particular pollutant in that particular environment. So chemicals in environment, savage by byproducts of uh, medicines and the food we eat, such as estrogen, birth control pills, and caffeine, products around the houses, perform fertilizers, pesticides, and medicines, industrial waste, and agricultural waste. So these things are present mostly in environment and these all things must be remediated, bio, biologically remediated, because these are pollutants, they survive in environment for longer time and can cause negative impact in ecological systems as well as in environment. Especially sewage material, if, if it will not uh, digested or degraded or decomposed in environment, it will produce various type of uh, conditions which can uh, facilitate for the growth of the pathogenic microorganisms as well as many more and other things which are suppose perfumes and fertilizers and pesticides and medicines these contain some xenobiotic type of the components uh, which can live in environment for longer time and this will be a component of the any environmental component such as air or uh, water or uh, crops uh, these can cause long term negative cons consequences in uh, food chain as well as in life and industrial such as industries they are producing products at the same time they are, they are Industries are producing waste material which contains xenobiotics, elementals, recalcitrant, carcinogenic components. If these will go into the environment, these can negatively infect the environment. So these must be remediated before uh, disposing to the environment. Similarly, agriculture, mostly agriculture contain organic material. Organic materials are naturally present and these can be degraded and decomposed easily because this process is going from long to nature and uh, microbial communities, fungal communities are uh, adopted to produce such type of enzymes which can degrade uh, agricultural waste.
fundamentals of clean up reaction the microbes can convert many chemicals into harmless compounds how this question has been clearly answered in our previous lecture and previous classes if you have gone through that microbes are producing enzymes these enzymes acting on substrates and converting them into harmless compounds or into elemental structure and we know very well that in environment there are numerous type of microbial communities are present and every type of microbial community have capability to produce a specific type of enzymes and every substance which is present in soil will work as a substrate for the enzymes and a cascade of reactions takes place if there is a one or one pollutant which is going to be decomposed if uh, one species producing one type of enzyme which breaks it from one place and it forms into another component these by components and compounds are broken down by other enzymes which are produced by other microbial communities so if the environment is aerobic or anaerobically if environment aerobic uh, if air is present in that environment their aerobic reactions will take place and aerobic microbial populations will decompose that component into less harmful compound are uh, a small uh, less harmful compound are completely they will degrade it if environment is anaerobic anaerobic microbial communities are there these are producing an uh, enzymes in anaerobic environment and they are decomposing uh, those components which are very hard are recalcitrant to degradation both involve oxidation and reduction reaction either that is aerobic condition either that is anaerobic condition in both oxidation and reduction reactions are taking place uh, which you have learned in detail in previous classes as well as in chemistry classes oxidation and reduction phenomena fundamentals of clean up reactions oxidation and reaction uh, reduction reaction oxidation involves the removal of one or more electrons so we have to understand here oxidation involves the removal of one or more electrons reduction involves the addition of one or more electrons if any substance is going to break down there is valencies and bonds and sides will be open where any compound where any element can be added if uh, of the in result of breakdown of any compound that oxygen removes from uh, any electron removes from that compound that is called oxidation if any compound getting any electron from other things from environment that is called a reduction oxidizing agent is again electrons and reducing agent is lose electron oxidizing agent gain electron we should understand this thing clearly oxidizing agent gain electron and reducing agent is loss of electron the reactions are usually coupled and the pair are ex reagents are known are redox reaction aerobic and anaerobic biodegradation aerobic oxygen is reduced to water and the organic molecules such as petroleum sugar are oxidized aerobic oxygen is reduced or water to water and organic molecules such as petroleum sugar are oxidized in anaerobic an inorganic compound is reduced and the organic molecules are oxidized such as nitrate is reduced and sugar is oxidized no 
Many microbes can do both aerobic and anaerobic respiration, which is called facultative condition, the process which produces the most ATP is used first. The players metabolizing microbes site usually contain a variety of microbes which we talked in a, a, a couple of uh, slides before closest to the contaminant anaerobic anaerobes fourthest away aerobes the most common and effective bacteria are the endogenous microbes such as pseudomonas in soil whenever pollutant is going into an environment into soil the existing microbial populations they are getting either they have ability to cope that situation to utilize to break down that contaminant into its basic elements or they are getting adaptation with passage of time and with availability of the substrate uh, they are using contaminant as uh, energy source and degrading the component that compound are pollutant into it is basic elemental form fungus and algae are also present in the environment and do a good job for cleaning up chemicals fungi do it better than bacteria such as we can see here for uh, petroleum component such as benzene, if this is contaminant source such as petroleum spills and methanogenic bacteria, first they will come decompose it and it they will convert into it and sulfate reducing bacteria will decompose it and iron reducing bacteria they will decompose further it nitrate reducing back and arrows will decompose it and gradually it will convert into a non-toxic form. Bioremediation genome program stimulating bioremediation air fertilizers nutrient enrichment to stimulate the growth of endogenous microorganisms adding bacteria or fungus to assist endogenous microbes is known bioaugmentation or seeding. So bioremediation genomic program is that we have to stimulate the existing microbial population by providing nutrients and fertilizers we will increase the population endogenous microbial population if endogenous microbial population will increase uh, the need of the nutrients and energy requirement will also increase and they will use for energy purpose uh, the available pollutant as a uh, energy purpose. Therefore, this process and this technique is called bioaugmentation or CD. Phytoremediation. Here is typing mistake, I think, phyto. Phytoremediation, utilizing plants to clean up chemicals. In this technique, we are using plants. We are growing plants in contaminated soil. What happens? Gradually, the plant, they are absorbing pollutants into it is aerial part as well as in root in leaves so what happens the pollutant from soil it is coming into the plant and leaves again from human and globe and from other living organisms for longer time and such type of technique phytoremediation type of technique we are using in uh, heavy metal contamination because whenever heavy metal spill or accident is there there is only source by which we can remove or we can clean up soil that is phytoremediation we are growing plants over there and the plant they will absorb pollutant into its aerial parts 
and it will live in plant form in wood form for longer time for example cotton wood popular juniper trees grasses alpha alpha it is the phytoremediation technique it is low cost low maintenance and it add beauty to the site so sometimes such techniques phytoremediation technique is used as a buffer zone wherever we are keeping feed lots or manures or any other things or uh, water treatment plant uh, at surrounding of that uh, field at surrounding of that plant uh, system we are growing plants what they are what doing plants they are absorbing all uh, pollutants and accumulating it biologically they are fixing these pollutants in as a organic form and keeping away for longer time from environment so phytoremediation which uh, the phenomena of the phytoremediation we can see in wetland clean up site and strategies so we must have to see which site we have to clean and in according to the site we have to adopt a strategy so understand this thing clearly where contamination occurred we have to clean that site we first have to check that which type of that site is either that have water that have sand that have forest and uh, that have agriculture soil which type of is site according to that we have to adopt a strategy to clean or to remove the pollutant from that environment do the chemicals pose a fire or explosive hazard we first have to see that the pollutant that can have ability to catch the fire or that can be ex uh, uh, explosive hazard so if the chemical have ability to catch fire or that have explosive potential we have to adopt strategy accordingly for this we cannot adopt any biochemical or microbiological activity uh, or strategy microbiological strategy or we cannot adopt any chemical strategy just we have to adopt any physical strategy and we have to keep the site away from the Uh, exposure uh, of the people we have to circle or close that place for such a time do the chemicals pose a threat to human health including the health of clean up workers what happened at chernobyl to workers so chernobyl accident we know which was a explosive of the nuclear plant in uh, russia so we have to think that uh, the chemical which has been expelled spilled uh, spilled our there uh, that have any health concern if the people will work our there they will be there will be some negative uh, impact on the health of the workers as it was happened in chernobyl so if such type of threat is there we have to install we have to adopt the strategy accordingly because we have to save the uh, health of workers as well as other individuals as well as environment was the chemical released into environment through a single incident or was there a long term leakage from a storage container so we also have to check this condition either that was a sudden spill of the contaminant or toxic material or that was gradually taking was leaked into the environment why did the contamination occur we have to check the again location is the contaminated area at the surface of the soil low ground does it affect water so we have to check either that oil that uh, spill has been that contaminant is on surface is it on underground or maybe it have get accessed to the ground for uh, ground water aquifer how large is the contaminated area we also have to check this thing so 
soil clean up either remove it x situ or in situ in place in place system we can adopt two type of type of strategy either we have to take this pollutant away from this place to treatment site either we have to treat this pollutant at that site where it happened so we will talk uh, uh, in this strategy in our second talk thank you very much